you're holding out hope that somewhere someone's going to come up with something. And fortunately, you know, on October 31st, 1920, Banting did come up with something with his 2 a.m. revelation here at Banting House. Would you mind taking that photo? Can you tell us who that is? <laughs> no, I can't. Tyler, do you know who this man is? I do not. Do you know who the man is in the photograph? No. Take that photo. Do you know who this man is? No. Can you identify who's in the photo? Uh, this is Sir Frederick Banting. I actually went to a high school called Sir Frederick Banting <laughs> Secondary School. So. You know who that man is? Yes, it is Sir Frederick Banting. Sir Frederick Banting grew up in Alliston on the family farm, uh, sort of late 19th century, last decade in the 19th century. We know Sir Frederick Banting as a co-discoverer of insulin, but it's a far more varied career and life experience. Growing up in a small farming community of Alston, just north of Toronto, graduate of the University of Toronto, war hero in the First World War, struggling doctor who is in the right place at the right time and comes up with the greatest medical discovery of the 20th century, which gives him a lot of pressures, I guess, both real and perceived from society, which leads to this fantastic career in art, and then an untimely death during the Second World War while serving his country. Growing up on the farm, I think, uh, really did help inform the, you know, the, the man he was to become, uh, sort of the career he took as well. A uh, very mild-mannered, unassuming man, uh, really did not take well to the publicity, sort of the celebrity status that was accorded him later on in life. Uh, conservative, sort of rural values uh, were, were espoused, and really through his entire life. For the patient-doctor relationship, of course, Bandy became this instant hero not only to patients, but physicians around the world. You know, uh, if you had a patient, you know, if, uh, if you knew this family, you know, and their child was your patient, you've known them for years, or known the family for years, and you have to break the news that your child's going to die. There, there is nothing I can do for you. Today, there is no treatment for diabetes. And so, uh, all of a sudden, it's not, just, it's not just the patients who come to revere and worship Banting, but so does the medical professional. True or false, he worked as a trained medical professional at U of T before the war. True? True. Um, true? True or false, he worked as a trained medical researcher at U of T. True. False. That's correct, actually. At first he was at School of Divinity um, before dropping out and joining the war effort. He finds his way to, um, to Toronto uh, at U of T and uh, eventually into the Canadian uh, Army, the Medical Corps. Uh, of course, this is at a time where they're desperate for doctors. Um, so I believe it's true that his, his training was, was uh, sort of expedited um, in, in order for him to be, to be trained and, and prepared and ready to, to ship out. Uh, so he goes to Britain and he's finally he's in France in, in, in 1918. So um, that's of course where he becomes hurt. Um, he's, uh, he's involved with some shelling at Cabrai and uh, he's taken back to London. He eventually makes his way back to, um, to Canada in 1919. He does a year at uh, Toronto's uh, General Hospital, our hospital for sick kids, and, uh, and then he's looking for employment. He finally finds his way to London. True or false, Banting was London's most successful doctor at the time. Uh, false again. And he realized very early on when he came to London, for instance, that there were quite a few veterans out there who, who needed help, who needed assistance. When he was discharged after the war, he came to London where he opened up a clinic. He would write prescriptions for alcohol, because at the time, of course, you, 
you couldn't just buy alcohol. Um, and um, um, some of these veterans were, were going through some, some horrific um, you know, effects of the war. Um, and post-traumatic stress now we would refer to it as, but, but you know, this um, um, certainly from, from their life in the, in the trenches and the shelling and um, but also of course physically, so physical ailments, lost limbs, those sorts of things. And so he, he also worked in trying to, uh, in trying to improve um, you know, sort of the, the, uh, the average veteran's uh, way of life too. True or false, he was one of London's most successful doctors at the time. True. False? False. False? True? I'll go with true. That's false, actually. Unfortunately, his practice was near collapsing before an affiliate at Western asked him to do a lecture on the pancreas and on insulin production, and that's what got him into the study in the first place. You're holding out hope that somewhere, someone's going to come up with something, and fortunately, you know, on October 31st, 1920, Banting did come up with something with his 2 a.m. revelation here at Banting House. Can you tell us what you think the percentage of Canadians who had diabetes at the time he was around, so about 1920? 45? Uh, 8%. Before insulin, can you think of the percentage of Canadians that may have had diabetes? Just a guess. Uh, maybe 60? 10 to 15 percent? Five. It's close, actually. About two to four percent uh, wavering. You know, there are hospital wards uh, where you would literally, you're, if you could afford to, you could send your child to a clinic to die. You know, we'll, we will put them on this, this regimen and then maybe someone will come up with something. I mean, there are also these fake cures out there. You know, the oatmeal diet, the rice cure, you go to a spa, you know, what have you, and, and they would try to, to make you better. And, and uh, there are fake pills uh, and other treatments. And so parents, would, if you could afford to, you would grasp at straws. For these people who were diagnosed, how long do you think their life expectancy was without insulin? Uh, less than 30 years. 20 years. Not great. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, I have no idea. Two years? Three years? Maybe a year? It's about six months to two years. So it was a median there, absolutely. Your life expectancy was generally about six months to two years, and it was a horrible existence. It would be a starvation diet. That became uh, Dr. Frederick Allen of the United States. It became the treatment, and it's basically you're trying to eliminate all the sugars as you can possibly get into your system. So 55 carbohydrates per day with all you'd be allowed. Vegetables would be thrice boiled before they're given to you. And you're given small portions. And as a parent, you have two choices. If your child's been diagnosed with diabetes, you can go on this plan. So you will buy a scale and you will measure every single gram of food. You, the standard book was the Jocelyn Diabetes Manual that will help you with portion sizes and how to clean uh, your equipment and what have you, and then these really restrictive diet sheets. And what happens is you just wither away. I think he gets involved in a number of things that, uh, you know, that, that, that it certainly isn't insulin related. Um, but also prior to, and I think, um, you know, again, his service in the, the, the First World War is, has really been overshadowed. Um, and what he took away from that. He saw a lot there as well, and I think, uh, um, you know, particularly his... His um, involvement, his care, I think, his um, understanding of war, and um, um, I think there's more to be done there when it comes to, to research, and maybe perhaps what he was working on during the Second World War. Well, and I think what comes out of that First World War as well, and certainly in the interwar period, is that, that science, that, that relationship between science and technology, and, and science and military technology. Um, and you can really follow that through into the Second World War, right? He was a very good student uh, of his good friends in the Group of Seven. He listened, and for him, it was all about this great escape. And, you know, it's not like in some other institutions where we have a famous person who paints, and, you know, whereas we have Frederick Banting who paints, and people say, why do you have Group of Seven works in your gallery? Well, well, we don't. Those are Frederick Bantigs. And all of a sudden, people are saying, you've got to be kidding me. 
And here we have something that people, you know, mistake, well, you know, is this a group of seven painting? You know, no, but this is what it is, is eight years of painting under the direction of, of, of A.Y. Jackson and really shows his growth as an artist. People would say he's nothing but a copier of the group. The group says, of course he paints like us. We're the ones teaching him how to paint. He does about 200 paintings and gives most of the way to friends and colleagues. Uh, you know, I get Christmas cards from visitors from 20 years ago. You know, coming here just to hope things are well at Banning House, still remember fondly this, the, the tour. And I mean, it's, it's very gratifying and, and it, it just sort of reinforces what we're trying to do here. We made an impact on someone and so I, I get to I get to to laugh with a scientist you know and, and you know and who says you know I will be back in five years to extinguish your flame. Um, and one of the other things that stands out of course is his you know is, is when he finally dies in the plane crash. Uh, of course that happens in Newfoundland. Uh, near, uh, Diabetes is our ultimate story. Yeah. You know that is what we're about. You know, you know we're about helping you know, 12 million Canadians affected by diabetes. You know, 372 million people around the world affected by diabetes. We're the caretaker of that story. You know, and that's what that flame of hope represents. It's what the globe represents. You know, the, the world will be gathering here when that cure is, fa is found. And in the meantime, people can learn what this place is about. Uh, as you say through this medium, with, you know, social media now is, is helping us tremendously with with our promotion because of our small budget. So things like this are, are just that little piece that, that help, uh, will help build our story around the world.